Okay. Good evening. It's 7.09 p.m. Uh, this is the remote meeting of the Financial Planning Committee. Uh, this open meeting of the Financial Planning Committee is being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, an act relative to extending certain COVID measures adopted during the state of emergency, signed into the law on March 29, 2023. All members of the Financial Planning Committee are allowed and encouraged participants and, and encouraged to participate remotely. The act allows financial, financial, financial Planning Committee to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. The public's encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. Members of the public who wish to view the live stream of this meeting may do so by going to the Northborough Remote Meetings on YouTube via the link listed on this, on this agenda. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. So let's start with a roll call confirming member access. Susan Sartori. Present. Ken Picard. Present. John Ray. Present. Scott Stockwin. Present. And John Rappa, present. We have a quorum. Um, the next item on the agenda is public comment. Do we have any members of the public? If so, if you'd use the raise hand uh, function on the Zoom, uh, we will field any questions. Not seeing any, we will proceed from there. So, uh, committee members, you've all had a chance to review the draft of the report. Yes? Yes. No? Is that a question? Uh, the answer That's is a yes. Question. question. Yes. Okay, good, good. Um, there are some parts of the report I, I, I highlighted in yellow. Uh, Scott, I got your comment, which is one of the things I was looking for. Thank you for that, that clarification. Uh, question for the committee. Do we want to kind of talk through each page of the of the report and then get into a discussion before we vote or or the opposite? What what does the committee think? I suggest we go through the report whatever way everybody wants to go through it and deliberate on um, what the report is or isn't and okay. how much we do or don't want to change anything and then take a vote. OK. Everyone okay with that? Yes. Okay. I'm going to share my screen and put the report up. Hopefully, you've got a copy with you. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Here we go. Everyone see this? Yes. Yep. Okay. So um, Scott uh, uh, advised me that his term expires April of 2027. I'll make that change. I'm going to make changes on my own hard copy here rather than on the screen. I'm a little more efficient with that if you all don't mind. So can I ask, are there any comments or questions or suggestions on the first page? No, for me. Not for me. It's pretty clear. OK. Uh, there's a table that lists committee activities. These are the things that our committee has done relative to either participation at community information sessions or overviews um, and discussions. Um, for example, the chief presented some of his capital needs back in March. He gave us a presentation on that. There are on-site reviews. We went to the fire station in March um, or the proposed site, which is, certainly I did. And then is, was it, we had a tour of the fire station in June. So there's a number of sessions here kind of illustrating that um, we've had multiple opportunities to delve into aspects of the project as it evolved from uh, the late last year, beginning of this year until now. Uh, have I missed anything? No. OK, anybody else? No. So the, the remainder of page two is, is background general comments. Some of this uh, is language we had in our report from back in April for the, the recent town meeting. Um, some of this is boilerplate. Uh, any, any comments or suggestions on this language on page two? 
None. I have none. Scott, John? None for me. Okay. Scott? Nope. Looks good. Okay. Um, starting on page three, and some of the exhibits that follow it are, are, are supporting about what, what is the fire station project. And this will culminate into um, what the article is that uh, is being put before the town. So the information I have in here, uh, I assembled from various meeting minutes and uh, some of the YouTube presentations. I corroborated this uh, with uh, what was on there. And then some feedback from a couple of you on uh, on some of this. So there's, you know, the fire station building committee, what their mission is, um, that the existing fire station is 50 years old. Um, what was the, the discussion or the process relative to why do we get to where we are in terms of uh, uh, the feasibility of renovating the existing Pierce Street station, et cetera. So I, a couple of you gave me some, some feedback on that, which I massaged into here. Um, what the last thing on this page says, you know, as a result of that process, it decided that a new fire station was the best option. Um, any other comments or questions on this page? Uh, I loved I all the question. information you, sorry, sorry. Wait, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I loved all the information you included and I'm really happy to see the addition of the emergency medical services now represents 68% of, um, I, I really liked that. Thank you. Okay. All right, Ken. Uh, so, John, I don't know if it's somewhere else in the report, and I, I missed it. But uh, in your second set, second paragraph, you talked about it was designed to house two staff members and ten thousand residents. What's the current proposed station designed for? How many staff members? What population? How many years out is it good for? So, the 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 station, the proposed station, will will be able to house. Um, 14 people, um, and, and that, that's in each of three shifts. Uh, so the, the facilities on the second floor, bathroom facilities, shower facilities, bunk rooms will, will be able to, to support that many. And so that is more than the, the department has today. The department has 23 full-time staff across three shifts. Um, second part of your question, Ken, was what? Um, how far out is it projected to be able to okay. support the town and what um, population? The, the, the committee has designed this building to last 40 or 50 years. So there's growth capability in the apparatus bay configuration, allowing for the fact that over time, certain uh, fire equipment uh, has gotten larger uh, in size. And so as equipment is replaced, uh, if, if equipment does get larger, the, the, the apparatus bay area is, is, is big enough to support that. That's number one. Number two, the administrative offices and the sleeping quarters are large enough to, to accommodate uh, an increase in staff should that uh, occur uh, as we go from here. And then I don't think the fire station committee quantified what the town population would be in X amount of years. I don't think they got to that. I'm just trying um, to correlate to what you have in your that paragraph to make sure it's somewhere else in the report as clearly as you stated in that paragraph. It's going to house X amount of uh, firefighters. It's going to take for another 50 years. It's going to cover our needs. And, you know, you had the, the notation about residents. Uh, I'm just trying to follow that, that protocol that you, you set up. Okay. All right. So um, then we'll add... And I don't know if this is the no, no, no. location we'll add in there. maybe somewhere well, else in the report. Maybe a little further down, we'll, we'll add to this uh, some dialogue on uh, accommodating future growth in more detail. Yeah. On page okay. five, you actually have the building will contain six triple deep apparatus space size to yeah. accommodate it. Some of the information Ken's asking for might be well served on that particular page. I saw the thing for the apparatus. I didn't see about personnel. Yeah. Or longevity of the building. Uh, we, I'll, I'll, I'll expand on that. Okay. okay. Thank right. you. John, any any comments or observations? Not, not for me. I have one okay. question, um, John. So regarding the uh, section here that talks about renovating the current fire station on Pierce Street, 
Um, right. Is there a cost associated with that review? Um, there was prior to the, the fire station building committee that that's in place today, that's panel today, there was a feasibility study done prior to COVID. I was not involved in that. Um, there was some cost benefits done through that study. There was a, there was an outside design firm brought in at that time. Um, I may or may not have that information. Uh, is that, do you think that's important to add here? Which, which for example, if it costs, you know, 10, 10 million to renovate or 30 million to renovate. Again, if, if there was a number, it's pre-COVID. So whatever the dollar amount was, isn't apples to apples today? So, Scott, what do you what do you what do you think? What do you suggest? Um, I, I'm just curious um, because I I do recall back when we looked years ago at the um, uh, the school Algonquin, right? Mm -hmm. I believe that there were two options that were presented to the town. It was the build versus the ad ren. Right. Town voted on it that way. And I'm just wondering, I'm just curious. I'm not against the fire station. I'm just curious. And I think people will be asking, like, well, why can't we do this? And we should be prepared to answer those questions. I'm sure it's going to come up at town meeting. I will and go I back and, and look and check with uh Dawn Rand and the chief who are on that prior committee. And if something was quantified, I'll I'll, I'll see where it logically fits in here. But these dot points here towards the bottom of the page are the main reasons the renovation option wasn't chosen. Yes, and one of them says the cost to purchase adjacent properties. Some place yeah. there might be a report that has that number in it. And then I'll, I'll attempt to find that. Okay. So it would be the cost to renovate or, or, or demolish the existing station, acquire adjacent properties, and, and make it a bigger footprint. I'll try to find that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the challenge that you might face, and uh, pardon me, through through the chair, John. Um, I think the challenge you might have is that was done so long ago that the the cost, the comparison of the costs is going to be so so far off from. from yeah, what and and I hear you. Today. I hear you. So let me see what I what I can find, and if I can find some number, uh, if it makes logical sense, or try to massage some language in there. Um, because there have been a number of questions through the fire station building committee meetings where there's been public comment and the community sessions and community info sessions about um, the 2019 study that was done of 2019 numbers. And, you know, why was it this number then? Why is it this much then? So um, the committee has attempted to answer that multiple times. So let me go take a look and see where it makes logical sense. Okay. But you're right. I, I think some of this may come up at town meeting. Um, hopefully, by the time we get to October, people have seen enough information. By the way, but Tim McInerney has said that that this report, since it is a Prop Two and a Half um, article and a vote, will be sent to every uh, resident of the town. Yeah. And I think the 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 appropriations also, and, and maybe something else. So this. Maybe the first time some people in town have seen this. Hopefully, it will, it's not. But there, with there, the committee has attempted through multiple ways to uh, get community um, information out there and, and engagement. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, just a quick follow-up question. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, buzz around now about the uh, the purchase of the old old fire station. Right. And it sort of makes you uh, reflect on the fact that we're kind of leaving empty fire stations around different parts <laughs> of the town. And so I wonder if um, if there are plans for this building once the the, the existing started. the existing Pierce Street fire station. Scott? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there there is a um, one of the YouTube videos that's on the, the the website on this addresses that. I haven't looked at it. I know it's been brought up by the master plan committee and is a question of you know what can it can it can the town convert it to something can it be sold um it's not linked to this project but i would say if people have a strong feelings about it then it should be brought to the attention of the, of the master plan committee okay all right uh, i want to piggyback on what scott said i think it's it's appropriate to put a number in there for renovation even though it's old you reference the report and say in this report of 2019 this is what the cost is and then on okay. the floor you can answer the question 
about it being uh, updated or not. Okay, all right. And I presume there will be questions, but but we'll get to that. Okay. Uh, any I mean, other? I think, I think yeah. Just just on that vein, I think something and I've been that I haven't fully had an answer to that I've asked in different angles, and maybe I'm just not very clear. But um, I think it'd be helpful to know like what is the cost of the fire station as proposed versus the cost of a fire station that met our needs. Um, and this does meet our needs, but without a clock tire, without two roof monitors, without a hose drying station, and then I and I, I don't I don't know if. First of all, I don't think that's within our purview to answer. That's number one. It would be the, it would be the building committee. Um, and I think you asked the question the other day and the designers uh, came back and said, there's no way to say, okay, the clock tower costs $10. The, 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 each of the, 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 the six uh, apparatus bays costs $12. There's no way of, of dissecting that. But I would leave that to the committee to answer should there come up at town meeting. Yeah, and I think from just um, from my role in financial planning committee, um, I think it's an important question to answer so people mm -hmm. understand yep. the decisions we're making to meet, to put these options onto the fire station. Um, I'm fully supportive of fire station. Um, and what if a clock tower cost twenty five million dollars of the forty four? And 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 I don't think that's true. I, I'm, but but I think the fact that I can't credibly answer that. Yeah. And I can't get that information is a big concern. Um, okay. The way I view this coming right now is just we took a design and and we just built to a design, and 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 that's where I think some of the tension is. Okay. So a couple of things from from my perspective, sitting on on that committee for more than a year, observing the the evolution of the de, the design and the design documents, etc., and feedback from the community. Um. The main marching orders for the committee was to build a fire station that meets the operational readiness of the department that protects the health and safety of the staff. That's number one. Everything else came behind it. Aside from a clock on the face, which people in, on the design review committee and planning board and other people in, in the community said would be nice, there is no fluff in this building. It does allow for growth, uh, but there's nothing there that uh, doesn't meet the operational requirements of the fire department. And, and there's no disagreement. And I've been at those meetings and I wish there was more community involvement. I'm there and there's yeah. eight people and, and they're very nice eight people. Um, mm -hmm. But but our town's bigger than eight people. Um, yes, agreed. So, agreed. So, so, so as a person that has a fiduciary responsibility to the town on the financial planning committee, mm -hmm. um, I think about those things, right? And I think about um, a host drying station is not standard in all fire stations that are being built right now. I if you go, if you go, if you go to the existing, I can finish. You go to the existing okay. fire station. We have one. Just so th these things would be nice to understand, so we can mm -hmm. communicate them well to the town. And I, okay. and that's uh, that's just just a statement. I'm not asking us to derail anything, but but these are the questions. As a financial planning committee, I have not had the answers to, and right. and, and so I just want to just. Just as as some of the other conversation around the cost to improve the current fire station, I just wonder about what would be, and I don't propose this, but what's the minimally viable fire station we could build that meets all the needs you described in your opening versus the things we're choosing to invest in. Right. And that, that's, that's just, a, just a blanket statement. Okay. Did you get a tour of the fire station yet with the chief? I have seen the fire station. Um, I have not gone to the chief, and I will. And by the way, there's I, no, I there's think no you disagreement. Should. There's no disagreement I, that we need a fire station in my conversation. But I have seen it with my with my with my uh, teenage son two years ago. But I will go. I, I do intend to go again. Right. I think if you go now with a different set of eyes, you will look at things more criti critically uh, in terms of the setup they have, uh, the quarters they have, the amount of equipment. Uh, the lack of storage space, among other things, but I would urge you to do that since the rest of our committee has done that. I appreciate that, I, and and, okay. and and I'm glad the rest of the committee has done it. And I will do that by the time we vote, and and, um, and, and I do appreciate that. But but my, I do want to just stand strongly behind my statement I just made because the question I've asked has has not been answered. Okay, I will make sure at the next fire station building committee, I, I want to add uh, something to their agenda that. Um, they go through a good set of slides in preparation for town meeting. Uh, there's there's a couple of decks many of us seen have seen. Uh, I want to make sure they got the right amount of information on the decks 
uh, that cover some of the types of questions you're ask, asking, among other things, and the information we have contained herein. Great, thank you. Okay. If, if, if I may jump in, John. Ken. John, um, I think it's, uh, it's not helping you by just calling it a clock tower. Uh, that is a multifunctional structure, that part of the building. It, it is um, for hose drying. It also helps the firefighters train to work in stairwells and also get people out of down through stairwells. So that is a definitely an asset they have and they should have in any type of building so they can train in those conditions. Uh, the clock is, a, is an aesthetic feature on the outside. I'm sure just the clock is a small amount of money. Um, they, I'm sure they can take that out um, to get take out for the cost, not remove it from the building, but take it out for the cost. Like we know what the cost is, but being able to dry the hoses and also be able to practice in stairwells, I think, is a uh, fundamental feature of that town hall. I mean, that fire station. Mr. Yeah. Chair, yes, I please. I I think um, the things that Jonathan is asking for what a lot of people are asking about. And part of it's the process. Um, you've been going through it for the last year or so. And I've just really introduced myself to the whole process and since probably last February, this, this past February. What I've realized in this process right now is that we're already this far along because a group of people listened to the fire chief in the people there for the needs. They worked with the architects to build a building that met those needs. A group of people worked in earnest for the last year developing a building that meets the needs, started the estimation of the costs and made decisions that they thought it was worthy of the cost, whether or not those costs are something that other people really want to pay for is a different matter. But my understanding of this process is the way that it is now, I don't believe that can be changed without a significant cost. You are correct. Okay. Um, the, the designs have been put together. They've been reviewed and approved by the planning board, the zoning board of Appro appeal, conservation commission, uh, design review committee, and those have been filed with the town and uh, signed off. So any changes going forward from here to, to add or change to that would be a change order. Um, the committee's about to, to launch the process to start pre-qualifying subcontractors and potentially go out to a bid on this after town meeting. So after the town, approves the dollar amount, a general contractor will know that A, it's been approved by the town and um, we will go out to several bidders and the town has to accept the lowest bid from the uh, general contractor who bid on the project. So there, there any, any changes to the building design, et cetera, uh, would have to take place after the fact. And have, and, and have and have uh, some or, or significant ramifications in terms of the process that we have been through and would have to go through. And then and, and if the town approves the dollar amount, um, right. um, I heard when, but I, but I think I think it is if um, I, I, I um, how much how much cost have we incurred on on this? I think I, I, I was reading, I know if it's the most recent, but a million dollars or so of sunk cost so far in, in design? No, it's more, it's more than that. So the town approved a town meeting, I think it was roughly 2017, I could be wrong. The purchase of the property, 61 to 65 West Main Street and subsequently 10 Monroe Street, um, they approved in that same uh, um, capital proposal the hiring of the owner's project manager, which is Collier's, and the hiring of a design firm, which is HKT Architects. Uh, it's $3.5 million to, to, to cover all of those things I just described. Now that's sunk cost already. Yeah, my understanding is that the budget that is left from the money that has been appropriated for this is only in the tens of thousands. It's, it's zero. 
it's now zero. zero. Yeah, it's, it's it's fully expended. Yes. Okay. I mean, there's, there's, there's 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 remaining obligations on contracts, but it's fully obligated. It's it's okay. Thank you. Okay. Can we move to the next page? Any uh, there's, there's more meat on this. So so this continues stating that the Main Street and Monroe Street properties were acquired in 2022. Uh, we selected an OPM. We selected a design firm. I have this this chart of, of activities that have occurred, and I put the number of meetings there. And the question is, do you, does the committee think that the number of meetings is is adds some weight to this, or is value, valuable? Otherwise, we could take it out. But you know, they met with the appropriations committee, community, we had community information assistance, conservation committee, construction document review. These are all the activities that the fire station committee has um conducted and gone through in the last you know year and change almost a year and a half mr chair please the only reason i could see for wanting to have it is is if the architects went to every meeting that was a cost that was incurred i will tell you looking at this the architects have been on just about all of these meetings and, and committee uh, sessions. And they charge for being there. Yes, they do. They're on the they are on the clock. Okay. As they were with us last week. Can I continue? So I have a session on, on the design overview, which gets into high level activities. A program development, schematic cost estimate, design and reconciliation was done with two professional estimators. Uh, construction documents were developed. And the construction documents, if you looked at um, the blueprints cover all aspects of this, of this the, uh, the foundation, the walls, the, the, the trusses, the living quarters, the mechanicals, all of that stuff uh, is in quite detail. And again, that was developed by the design firm and presented to the planning board, and design review committee, et cetera, uh, in some of those meetings. Most importantly, on the next page, there was discussion and feedback, like we're doing today, on various aspects of the building and the site design. And so, uh, building design elements, the driveway cuts, the, the geothermal system and, and air conditioning, parking lot, all of these things were discussed at numerous meetings, including feedback at community information sessions and public comments at committee meetings between December of last year and as recently as last month. And this says including but not limited to. So something was brought up that I didn't get here. I think that's a broad enough thing, but I think you, the public can see that you know, a lot of things were, were brought up that are meaningful. Any comments on that table? Not for me. Okay. So somewhere on this page, I will massage in there based on your suggestion. Uh, how the new fire station is is going to you know be uh, adaptive to the future growth of the town and the department. I'll, I'll I'll work that in here somewhere. I think it logically makes sense here. I think Ken, you brought that up. Yeah. Um, and then a question, John. I'm I'm not sure. And, and um, um, how much have we thought about um, or taken consideration of like the the residential versus industrial load of the need of the fire station based on you know the 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 growth the town has and the current footprint of the town is it is it um is that going to sort of like the math of how many firefighters how big it is those sort of things or or, or not um i don't know if i have a perspective on that i i know it's possible in the feasibility uh, committee work that was done up to 2019 that may have been brought up, but uh, feedback from the town is is that you know commercial industrial development is is kind of plateaued. Jason, perspective on that? 
I'm, I'm sorry. What was the comment? I, I missed. I was I was saying that, you know, relative to the growth of the town, it, it, it seems I've heard that commercial and, and industrial development is plateaued in the town. We don't expect any more large commercial okay. development. Correct. We don't have any large tracts of, of undeveloped uh, commercial industrial zone land at, at this point. So that's the okay. that's that's the common thinking is that when we analyze our new growth potential for the future, we're, we're probably at a, a state of near build out for the town. And, and just thinking back the five years to 2019, if that's when the math when it was done, I mean, we've had substantial amount of um, industrial investment in the town. Um, if that's if that was part of the consideration of the size, the need, or um, if that was part of the calculus or not. My understanding, John, is is that that came into the conversations then, and it was updated when this committee restarted last year, relative to okay, uh, is this building is this building operationally sized to fit to to sufficiently support the town, and so the building got slightly larger to uh, uh, accommodate a uh, larger equipment, the, the possibility of larger equipment in the future and, and more uh, firefighters and, and uh, uh, responders. So uh, the new design, the current design has been uh, sized to address that, to uh, have some um, up, to up, up head for, uh, for growth. Thank you. Okay. So I put four, a picture and, and three diagrams into the report showing the current rendering that has been uh, shown and depicted. I believe this is on the web, the, the website. Um, uh, the proposed design will be 30,850 gross square feet on two floors. Um, this is the diagram as of July including some trees and shrubbery and the wall behind it. And then there's the schematics of the first and second floor and the site plan and, and the subsequent pages. I, I don't know, uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, that it's feasible some people in town may be seeing this for the very first time. So I decided to put enough information in there to give them uh, an overview and to show them that, you know, we, we looked at this with a, a level of detail in mind. When the project is presented at town meeting, I assume that these types of diagrams will be discussed and presented by the fire station building committee uh, and any uh, uh, comments from the town will be addressed accordingly. And again, these, these diagrams you see here uh, have been developed by the design firm and they've been in slides the committee has used, which is where I borrowed them from. So this, start, this part of the, the report starts to talk about the costs and the committee has identified hard and soft costs. Um, there's information online about this, uh, the construction, the soft costs outside the scope of the general contractors. So currently, total project costs are estimated not to exceed $44 million, $119,000. Now, I've got the comment in there about minus the geothermal rebates. It brings it down to $42 million and change, $42.1. And I'm concerned that um, if we start throwing the, the geothermal rebates in there, people are saying, well, why aren't you asking for 42 million, not 44? Um, the town has to approve the, ma uh, Jason, uh, keep me honest here, keep the maximum uh, needed to uh, address the project. Yes? Yes, yeah, correct. That, 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 thanks, John. Uh, I'll just say that, yeah, th we need to ap appropriate the maximum amount that we're going to be spending so that we can have the authority to enter into contracts to to spend that amount of money. The the rebates, they're expected, they're li likely that we're 
going to get them, but the timing isn't definite on what on when that money is going to come. So the funding of of that 1.938 should follow through where we don't have to incur debt for it, but should at the end of 26, um, if we haven't received the rebates and those are still, um, you know, being applied for and, and worked through with the with the federal government, um, they we may need to borrow short term to cut co to cover them. So that's the that that's basically why. So a question. smart move myself, because if we didn't and we came sh up short because the rebates didn't come in, we would have to go back to town meeting. Yeah, we, we can't be in a position where we've authorized work that is is not author. The, the amount isn't authorized, basically. Right. So question for the committee, I got in brackets minus the geothermal rebates. Should we keep that or take it out for purposes of our report? I think you should take it out. Ken? Yeah, I think you should take it out, John. All right. Anyone else feel strongly either way? I guess I'd like to understand why you're asking. Do you feel comfortable with it there or not? I want to make sure that, that the committee is comfortable with, you know, again, this is our report. So I want to make sure the committee is comfortable with the language that's presented. I mean, I understand it, but I feel like I'm close to it. So, I mean, I yeah. think the opportunity to understand it is high. Um, yeah. So, so um, I don't know. I don't know. Anything north of 40, um, I think it's just, a, I, I think 42 and 44 are the same number. Um, okay. I think once you start talking about that, but it's it might be mainly stylistic. Um, I, I personally don't have a strong view and would support either. Okay. All right. I, I, I propose to take out the language in the bracket. So that I do, I do like your comment, John. You made the the other the other meeting we had when you were like wanted to in, ensure that money would be applied here, and mm. so I, I like the way we're thinking about it. It's the communication of it that we should probably make sure we're comfortable with. Yeah, and 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 functionally, I mean, I applied for a mass rebate myself here at home, my own house. We would have to apply for these. It's a federal rebate, and then a mass state rebate at total one point. After the building is done, after the geothermal is demonstrable, um, we probably got to file what sorts of paperwork to do that. And by that point in time, um, we've expended just about all of that 44 mil. And then the 1.9 would come back to us. So again, I don't want to, um, I don't want us to put anything in there that that's misleading to to the to the to the townspeople um but minus what's in the brackets you know not to exceed 44.1 million and subject to the final bid proposal from the contractor somewhat might make him in below this so right. um can we I take think, out i think with what jonathan said that there's no difference between 42 and 44 he's speaking for a lot of people out there the okay. way they look at it it's right. best to take it out this is how much they're being asked to appropriate at town meeting and at the ballot and it'll be up to the fire station building committee to explain that they also have put some cost savings that they hope to gain in the future and and, and if we want i mean as we talk through it if we want to even put something like um um the town has applied for a geothermal rebate of 1.938 million dollars that will be applied to the fire state or something like that to show that there is a potential that we're not asking for as much like i'm open to that too i think the one thing i'm not very clear on um and it may be non-material is there's there's as we think about the green aspect of this because the green aspect of this is a thing that some people may think is important so i'm thinking more in terms of like our, our you know our residents um the the electric vehicle charging stations like we, we've decided to do this. Um, I don't think we've ever clarified the use case for those. If they're for um, town vehicles, if they're for charging for residents, if that well, they're gonna be- let, let, gonna let, me give you, let me give you my two cents, John, on that. We are required, I'm told, to have yeah. EV or, or EV ready charging stations that cover 20% of the um, population of, of the uh, parking lot. So the parking lot is, is set up for 53 spaces. So that means okay. 11 spaces. And um, what's in the design is charging stations for four 
and wiring for the other uh, seven, just to keep the cost down. And the four intended to be like, I have an electric vehicle, so maybe I'm, my angle is a little bit overrepresented here, but are they meant to be like you go on and it's 50 cents per, per, per charging kilowatt, or is it meant to be? The, well, two, two, two things, two things. If, you, if you're looking at the plot, if you're standing on the sidewalk with your back to uh, Dunkin' Donuts, they'll be in the public parking section on the right side of the building. So the, so the, the, the west side of the building, they'll be there. Um, the, the committee has not discussed the specifics of, are we going to own the stations or, or are we going to have somebody put them in? How are we going to have revenues that we they have not gotten to that? Just the fact that we have to put them there, it's in the design, period. In the design and the cost to be able to do this, not the energy operating cost of the energy or anything, but how much it costs to actually put charging stations that you can That's use. That's correct. If you want to put a business model around it, you can do that. That's my understanding, yes. Okay. No, that, that, thank you. Can I can I make a statement just that's kind of obvious? John, we are so lucky as a committee that you were willing to serve as a liaison for the past year because the amount of information you're able to help us fill in the blanks is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I can walk I, John, the walk I, and I, talk I, the talk. I wholeheartedly agree. Well, I think the structure is not is probably not the best structure. Um, I, I do appreciate your leadership and ability to be able to bring your perspective to it. I think we're not able to do this without you. So I do appreciate Thank you. that. Thank you all. Good. Uh, the next part commencing on the bottom has the priority table. Again, this came out of- Excuse me, John, uh, can I? Can we go back a little yes, bit? Yes, Ken, please, please. Um, so with the construction, we're talking about all these other elements and this is something I haven't seen. I'm, I'm making an assumption it's gonna be done. Is there a commissioning element in the cost here so we're going to make sure that all the elements work properly yes so good good question thank you um this part of the soft costs of the building uh, uh encompasses the commissioning of the building um oh yeah there it is right that, in front that of that me number, i see it now that number thank is, you very that much numbers, <laughs> that number is quantified in the overall plan i don't have that number at my fingertips I'm not that no close. i'm not looking for the number i just want to make sure it was done and now it, I is, see it, it is covered the second bullet point thank you very much it is covered yep okay but the good hawk thank you anything else got john susan can we move on so this this table you're familiar with in terms of the priorities uh, we had some discussion of various of uh, the capital projects we looked at back in the spring. Uh, we'll we'll get down to the very last table on this where we we ultimately vote and put the numbers in in there. We'll get to that in a minute. But these are the four priorities that the town is using in its in its capital planning that hopefully you're familiar with from what we've done before. Now, tax impact. Uh, I put information in here that I got from Jason. And the question is, uh, are these the correct and, and uh, uh, representative? But I probably want to put a title on this, you know, projected tax impact to residents. And so this only goes out from uh, 2025 to 2030, but you can see the trajectory of the projected average annual increase. And then there's another table two pages down from this, we'll, we'll, we'll see in a minute, that again, Jason used at the Financial Trend Summit. Um, and I think this was used uh, last week when the fire station presented to our committee and, and appropriations. But I'm trying to show kind of what this trajectory is to the town. And again, I've got some language highlighted in yellow here that, that I want people to, to focus on. And then there's a section which begins with as a, as a disclaimer. I, I think we need to talk about does it, does it belong here, but uh, general impressions with this chart and the language that follows it. I, I think this part's clear. I think the one thing that, that I think may come into the conversation is we're talking 20 versus 30 and, and 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 what does that mean like is historically are we are we doing projects like this at 20 and we're choosing to do 30 because of different dynamics or do we change your, the way that we budget these things and, and they're not longer duration and we should have that's the one part that i think that 
will come up and it doesn't have to be in here, but just the way we, we kind of think about it. Cause I, I don't know the answer to that. Is your question, are, are we going to, uh, uh, go out to a 20 or a 30 year bond on this? Is that the question? I, 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 you know, that's ultimately the question. I think, it, I think I know the answer. I think it's a 30 year bond. Well, the, this, okay. uh, this, this table here is re representing a 30 year bond. Um, the, the 30 year bond was just to show um it's we we can't borrow longer than 30 years but that's that's the longest lifespan that we can we can legally borrow for um the project the the building is expected to last 40 to 50 years or or longer and so um we tie the the useful life of the of the debt to the, the we tie the debt um term to the the useful life of the of the asset that we're buying generally um the the difference between 20 and 30 i think we have some tolerance numbers in the in these numbers john i think is shown there um i i think uh that decision hasn't been made yet whether it would be 20 or 30 years i think the hope is that um the, the market will change and the interest rates will go down. It sounds like that's a, a potential to happen so that perhaps a 20 year bond would be less than the numbers presented for, th for 30 years now, if the, if the interest rates drops significantly enough, right. um, that that's a policy decision that hasn't been made yet. And I, I believe that it would be, um, we bring that to the select board to make that decision in terms of, what what the rates are at the time um you know between when this was produced and when we um did the financial trend on august 1st and then um a lot of these numbers were the same ones that we used to present or we i i did the presentation to the select board on J july 15th um it sounds like to me from our financial advisors that the rates are likely to to go down I, I, again i think they gave us a really conservative rate of 4.25 and it will probably go down but um it's it's hard to say today what's going to happen um we we likely wouldn't be going out to bond until may or june and and you know they're competitively bid and so it's it's hard to say what the, what the conditions will be then I guess my question, and I do appreciate that, and I think about the, I think about the same way you're describing it as well. I think there's probably some upside and rates going down, and 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 we should plan on the conservatism. Um, I think when you think of projects, like I guess the last project that we did that was um, twenty million dollar plus, with like um, I, maybe maybe it's the school. Like when we did this, like Lincoln Street. Oh, oh, oh yeah, Lincoln Street. Did we do a thirty year? And, um, and and are we thinking of like I wanted to understand if we're changing the way we think about on duration to get to a number versus um, how we've historically done things. I'm thinking more in terms of like risk management and capital structure than I am versus um, in, in just that context. And, and if 30s market, how we've always done things, I think that's important. No, if we're if we're generally do things 20 when moving to 30, I would like to know that as well. And I, I I'm just not informed. Yeah, we. Jason? The, the the last significant project that we did was obviously the Lincoln Street School, and that was uh, I, that that's a inherently different project because it was subject to we we authorized I, I forget what the authorization was it was something like thirty million dollars for the project and the project uh, we ended up being exposed to after MSBA reimbursement um, we we had short term debt for longer. And so it's just modeled a little bit differently, but um, so the the debt for that project was we had two bond issues for that that were back to back year and, and two consecutive years. So we ended up borrowing about fifteen million dollars total. So and that was over twenty years. E each of those bonds was twenty were twenty years. And was in the useful life of the school was twenty or thirty years. It's not forty or fifty. No, the useful life is is just as long. But the, the okay. Bond yeah. was, was, I mean, I think these are these are important nuances, right? Like we're we're changing the way we approach things to get to numbers, and we got we got a prop two and a half, and and I think what residents will think about is a town hall number that has a placeholder of twenty coming up, but I've heard fifty. Um, we've got Peasley coming up at some point in the ten year plan, I think, and it has to obviously happen. And that again, so we might be looking at a hundred million dollars of stuff. So the degree you can save 
four or five million here and there will matter to taxpayers. And um, so that's the way I'm thinking about it in terms of yep. what, what residents may consider, what they may think is important and how we talk about it and how we're clear. I, yep, I, agreed. I'd, like, I'd like to continue on that conversation. First of all, I do want to make a correction. It's a fire station. It's Peasley School. It's the Northboro Middle School. And then it's the town hall because they're not even in our capital improvement plan. The Millican Middle School is in our capital plan for as long as it's there that the school doesn't remove it from there. So we have to remember that it's there and their feasibility study is for fiscal 2029. In regard to, to um, 20 or 30 years, I'd like to understand which will be better for capacity to be able to work on our other, on our other projects that are in the capital plan, Jason. Will it make a difference? Um, I, yeah, I, I'm not sure that it will make a difference. So it's like the our capital plan goes out six years, and the the next the next project that would be coming in would be the Peasley School, and um, the, the the debt numbers that we use to compare to the debt policy of the town, you know, was um, you know we used the 30 year table for that to to compare those numbers. For, for both of those projects. You did use the 30, yep. 30 years. Okay. All right. So Su Susan, needless to say, the longer you go out on duration, the more interest you're paying. I understand. And when, when you get to the next the next chart, two pages down, we'll we'll, we'll talk about that. I but just we, think we that... could we could pay it down in 10 or 20 years, but we're going to have a stiffer bill every year. Uh, but we're going to pay out less interest. I just I feel that some people will be concerned that the next projects won't get done. And so we just need to be able to kind of give the answer that Jason just gave. Yep. Yep. And we did yep. model it at 30. Yeah. Yes. So um in the shading I have in but can, can I make text, one additional point? We we did yeah, model it at the 4.25%. So I, again, like I said, that's a policy decision that'll be made later. Um but we used a conservative interest rate. The uh, you know the interest rates were around one percent at the time that um, Lincoln Street was was borrowed. So it, it's a significantly lower interest rate than what we've modeled for these projects, due, just due to market conditions now. Thanks, Jason. Okay. Um... There, Jason had this language at the bottom, which says, as a disclaimer, and I've got it in yellow because I, I put it there and, and as an afterthought, I'm saying, is it confusing? Does it belong here? Is it, a, is it an orphan? Uh, I don't know how much weight that gives to what we have here, especially when you bring up the $344, which doesn't come somewhere anywhere near this chart. So I, I'm proposing that we take that out, the last sentence and, and the two numbers below it. The, the other thing I think we got to be cautious of, right? Like 342 estimate average annual tax impact over 30 years is interesting, but then residents get their tax bill and it's like, wait, it's up $497 and, yeah, and mine's up at $1,200. And so, I mean, it, it can be a little bit misleading um, in terms of not all residents will be here for 30 years. Some will be here for you know, six months, I'm here for 60 years. And, and I think it's I, hard. I, to... I personally will not be here for 30 years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm making decisions the same. I'm making decisions yeah. that'll affect people that um, when, when I'm, I'm likely not to be here in, in 30 mm -hmm. years. And, um, and um, so I, I think about like, how do we, how do we communicate with the near term, the first few years, the first year, how do we communicate that to residents? So it doesn't feel misleading uh, because let uh, me, let me go so to the next pretty, chart. Um, you know, there's the a pretty deep chart. debt table in, in here that shows the shows it over the course of the 30 years. But this, maybe this, maybe this you is do sideways. Want to make a narrative to say that the the highest, the first and highest year is projected to not not to exceed um four hundred and seventy-two dollars. And then and then I mean, again, like so that that's the average and not all houses are created average like that's that's the squishing the town together. So I think the other thing that would be helpful to say at an assessed value of X, whether it be 2023 or 2024 or whatever we have reliable data on, that would be the tax impact. And then well, John, do the math in their head. John, this this table, you see the heading uh, AFSHV average yeah. 
I'm, single I'm, I'm family. Trying, I'm trying. My, I'm getting a little bit of a creak in my neck, but I'm trying to. I'm, try, I'm trying. I'm trying to see it. <laughs> uh, so single family home values from six hundred fifty-five thousand up to a million, a million one eighty-seven. There's the annual uh, tax hit. And yeah, I, 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 think I, need to, I think I need to print this out to to make this work, so I can. Yeah, you, actually, you, you I, should. I can't, I'm not smart enough to take vertical and make horizontal with, yeah. with so many rows. My brain's not capable. And I, again, this is from from Jason's presentation, and, and yeah, it's maybe. based on forty two million two nineteen nine. Yeah, so yeah. so basically, what this this table is showing is what the the the. The current in FY24, this average single family home value was $624,000. This inflates it to six fifty five. dollars That's what we project it's going to be. That number won't be finalized till we set the tax rate in the fall. So we don't know that number exactly, but there's been assumptions built in. So it should be somewhere around six fifty six. dollars um, And then all this table is doing is inflating that number by 2% per year to show the tax impact. And you know what? Real estate prices may go up more than two percent every year in the future. And I and I think the flip side is we have. I think our base industrial base is is roughly like twenty to twenty five percent. The commercial industrial. Yeah. Yeah. So like I don't know how I how I draw a correlation on what that means there and if there's a burden shift at all. Um, uh, it's just. Yeah. Um, I think I think these things will just uh, maybe and and you know maybe I need to wrestle with a little bit more. But it's just it's not as clear to me and I'm, I have a finance background so. Um, it may not be as clear to residents. So, that's yeah, all. I don't want people to look at this and their eyes glaze over. Yeah, but I we think... want to give them. We want to give them, you know, a level of detail so that they're a comfortable and b can make a decision one way or the yeah. other. No, it's the three forty four estimated annual tax they see on this, and that's what they remember. And you're like, oh, we showed you an exhibit, didn't you look at it? It had all on there. Yeah, yeah like, there no, fourteen no, 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 columns no. and thirty seven rows, and yeah, someone no, no, did no, no, something. No. Like that. And no. so, I, I think just, 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 a, I guess a general comment is. To pull to pull vote forward with a little bit more clarity, where we can help people really understand it, so we don't get backlash on a tax bill if it is approved, um, and and we have it feels more transparent because not everyone is as comfortable in numbers as maybe this group. Yeah, yeah. So let me go back to to this text here. Um, the language which begins with as a disclaimer and the numbers one, two, and three. I don't. Think they? I think they're confusing. I, I want to propose we take that out. I I, yeah, yeah, I think time. if we're gonna if we're gonna have a couple of like um, couple of like snappy bullets, I'm not sure those are the ones we want. I think we we'll want no, a couple no. of snappy bullets that make people understand it easier. Right. And again, I clipped this in from Jason's presentation from a couple of weeks ago, and and the select board. Um, he also mentions the projections assume that the rebates. Uh, that's the first time it would be mentioned in here. I mean, would it be more helpful if it just said that the high year is what the high year is expected to be? I, I would actually say year one, if your house is assessed at like, you know, call it 20% below the um, average assessed at the average assessed 20 percent more than the average assessed that's what that range looks year five something like that so people can kind of conceptualize what it means because again like i even find people when they talk about assessed value versus market value i mean they're not as this this language isn't as fluent to people that are going to consume the information so i'm always a fan of like how do i communicate to like someone at a fifth grade reading level and and i say that yeah. with respect because that's how we train that's how i i run my training organization to work it's one and how do you communicate that? Because that's what people remember. Okay. Jason, so, what do you think of the disclaimer being taken out? I, I'm I'm fine with that disclaimer. I mean, personally, I'm fine with that being taken out. I mean, okay. The, I mean, I think that the, the table is obviously you know maybe, you know, too detailed, but um, maybe Which, say, maybe say the, re reference the, the, the table and say that you know, of uh, for. People's values, assessed values vary greatly in town and 71 cents of the tax rate is project, you know, the high year is projected to be $472 and that is projected to drop to $216 by the end of the 30 years or 71 cents of the tax rate, you know, 71 cents times yeah. each. And, and, each and I do think that's valued. 
keeping it as an exhibit or keeping it in there is, 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 is nice. Like, I think that people like, there'll be people that like want to see that, but almost, it's almost like, you know, if you're in the bottom 20% of assessed value, boom, top 20% boom, average boom. And like, and people understand it. And, um, and I think that's going to be key because I think these things from my experience, anytime you're dealing with it and, you, and you're talking like a different language and you're talking about like, proposition two and a half and all those other things and not everyone's going to be able to fully understand like the context of the conversations we're having right. so right. how you can how you can make that um digestible for different and in in, 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 in in a um accurate way and then the people that are going to dissect it that are driven by numbers and want to know it have have information to draw their own conclusions from that they can right. use right so let me work on some more lead in surrounding this table and a bridge between this and and this chart okay so yeah. through the chair i, I have a Please. very simple uh, request with a chart yeah is that we label the axes what they are uh agreed especially yeah so so noted okay so, so we're going to keep us... in the whole chart, but we're going to call out a couple of numbers, like first and last year. Is that what you're doing? I'm going to try something like that. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I've made some notes and I've got to go out and do some scratching. So this is, this table is what we see uh, we've used in the April town meeting in terms of um, the project, the article that, that is the sponsor is the fire department, what the cost is, uh, the priority and, and what is our recommendation? Yes, no, or abstain and, and how many people? So 44,119.9 is the high end, that's why it's in red. Uh, as you heard Jason say, you know, that's what we're going to be asking for, not, not the 42. And this may be semantical, but is this a one, two, three, or a four priority in your opinion? I believe yeah. it's one, two, and four. Yeah, I think it's, I'm comfortable with whatever you want. It's semantical to me. It's just not number three. Okay. Because that's uh, an existing Scott. building being redone. All right. Scott, Ken? Yeah, I, I was thinking one and four, but I'm okay with all, adding two also. Okay. All right. Fine. Um, when do we um, come when do, when do we come to a financial planning committee recommendation is that in september we're, no we're going to get to that hang on hang on um the dot points below this it, it's supposed to, to to give some synopsis of of what the what it is so it's a request to design construct furnish and equip the new fire station include a payment of all costs incidental or related such sums shall be raised by borrowing or otherwise is there any other language we want to put in here uh, again this is what People are going to look at what's going to be on the screen when um, the moderator is going to be asking for a vote. I might, I might say, you know, it will be contingent on a ballot election, Proposition Two and a half ballot election. Just add a bullet point to that. Yeah, I think getting back to Jonathan's comment earlier about confusion, uh, two and prop two and a half approval is a two-step project, and somehow we got to be very clear to let people know that. If they voted for it at the town at the town meeting, they still it has to be voted at a ballot, and um, they both have to pass. Right. And to your point, gentlemen, ladies, uh, I, I presume at town meeting, between the select board and the moderator, that process would be uh, uh, discussed, so people it's understand nice this. In the report, right? Something. Yeah, yeah. I will add that. I will add that. Just uh, steps to put the project forward. Just make it really simple. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, any other questions, comments, things we've missed or, or that are unclear? But yeah, I mean, I want to make sure I, I'm listening to both Susan and, and, and Ken, like make clear, like, but um, we are going to make it clear that's like a tax override, right? I will add that, John. Something in there. That, I mean, but yeah, I'm, I'm supportive of the whole. Yeah. It covers the prop two and a half. Yes. I'm yeah. going to add that yeah. as a dot point to this. Yes. Yeah. 
So let me stop sharing my screen, if that's okay with you. Here we are. Um, again, any other any other comments? We I will have Scott. Scott? Oh, he's there. Yeah. Okay, great. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I will um, make the changes to this draft, get a new version out tomorrow. Uh, Jason, you'll get a copy. Okay. Um, what is your target date for needing to put this to bed? Um, what was it? The, the mailing has to be two weeks before town. Two meeting. weeks before town meeting. So, I mean, I want to get this put to bed before September 15th. Right. Right. So that gives us a month. And when you say to bed, the report being finished, because I think we really should have the report submitted to the Board of Selectmen for their September meeting. Well, which that's I is the ninth or something. Fine, you know, let, we got to get it done before then. So it's got to be done by the end of this month, in the and next we, two, and, two, two, two plus weeks. And we are required to submit a report to appropriations also. So to get it to them as soon and, as And uh, I intend to give a copy of this to, to uh, Scott Rogers. Okay, great. Yeah. Are we at a point to uh, have a vote on this? Yeah, John, just one question, and I'm glad you brought it up. Um, that the cost we have listed is 44 million plus, right. and then somewhere in the report we're talking um, less than that, aren't we? No, nope. never mind. No, I, I, we I took, took care that of that out. problem. We That's why it's in red, just just to make sure we we just jumps out at you. 44. 119.9. Yeah, no, we're, we're all set. We took the re, uh, rebate stuff out. Okay. Yeah, yes. And that number was corroborated with the fire station building committee and their uh, designers and uh, project manager. Yeah. Is there a specific number. wording of a, of a motion to move forward? Um, specific. Let me see. Give give me one second here. Make sure we do this correctly. Do I hear a motion on page fifteen, Article One, the fire station project? I move that we support the fire station project cost forty four million one hundred nineteen thousand ninety dollars nine hundred dollars. Second. Any second? Okay, let's do a roll call vote on this. Susan Satori. Yes. Dot Stockland. Yes. Jonathan Ray. No. Ken Picard. Yes. And John Rappa. Yes. So our vote is five to one. Excuse me, four to one, since we have Rob missing. We'll, we'll mark the report accordingly. Uh, as we, I, I, as we yes, move yes. closer to town meeting, can we re-vote it to include Rob at some point or? I like that. Uh, I suppose we could. Okay. He did send yeah. me an email, but I, I won't speak publicly uh, about his feelings on this. Uh, he can't vote by proxy. So um, we decide that we want to reconvene and vote again. We could do that. OK. Right. Can his email be disclosed to the Financial Planning Committee or no? Um, I'd rather not in terms of just open open meeting law stuff. I'd rather keep it. Um, and, and, and the other question, I think Su Susan went to vote quicker than, than I anticipated. Um, the, the question I had was, um, could you remind me who the chair is? Of which committee? The fire station committee that's dawn rand okay yeah i was okay thank you dawn is the chair mitch cohen is the vice chair yep thank you i just okay. i've been familiar I, I, yeah thank you okay so uh under under the next topic of any other business are you all got of an email from angie today it is um uh, a, a memo sent to tim McInerney, dated august 6th on the ballot question, reminding people about campaign finance laws and what you can and cannot do. And it's sent to the select board, appropriations, fire station building committee, and our committee. 
So I would urge you to review it and re re refresh yourselves with uh, what's contained in there. And when you um, were appointed to these respective positions, you should have gone through some of this campaign finance law in the training sessions. It's, it's a reminder because this is a ballot question uh, that we're putting up. Second thing I have is uh, I sent you the link, I believe it was Monday, to the new videos that the fire station building committee has put together describing various aspects of the project. I think there's 17 or 18 individual videos of anywhere from a couple of minutes to 20 minutes in length that um, can be accessed from the town's homepage on the website that you can look at any of them or all of them sequentially, uh, their YouTubes. And so it's out there and we want to bring that more, the committee wants to bring that more to the, to the town's attention as another tool for what I call project awareness. So that's out there. Any other questions? Just a, uh, just a closing comment, John. Um, you know, this is something that I talked about at the last meeting and, and uh, Jonathan brought it up tonight. I think it's gonna be really important that we allow, put a mechanism in the presentation to allow people to personalize what their impact is going to be, right? I mean, John talked about a plus 20%, minus 20%. Um, I'm not saying that it has to be that way, but there should be some way to allow people to figure it out in their head because nobody was really going to pay the average, right? And you, you don't want people to walk away feeling like I'm going to pay 344. And, and to that point, that average is over the 30 years, it's not the average of year one. So the, the shock and awe that you get year one could be very different than what you get on sort of a blended rate over 30 years. When as John Rappa said, he's out, he's not here in 30 years. Um, so, so what is it for the people in the near term? I think is really critical. Yeah. First right. year is actually what people are going to be yeah. wanting. Yeah. Jay, Jason, I'd like to get some time with you and find out in some of the presentations sure. you have what we can use yeah. or modify that makes some sense rather than go recreate the wheel. Yeah, I mean, the, all, all the information's in the table, but how we explain it in, in a narrative yeah. way is is what's important. So if you take right. the table, you know, you could apply the 71 cent tax rate to a, a value that's 20% less versus one that's 20 or 20% 20 more than than what's shown as the average. Okay. So we, we, right. get there. I mean, I think that, I think that explanation come out, but I mean, I'm, I'm kind of pleased with the comment that we want to show that I like to, you know, fully just, I, I like these things to be explained in, in a, as, as conservatively as possible so that people understand that nobody's surprised when they have a 472 addition dollar addition to their tax bill in right. year one. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's just I, right. I really like the way that Scott and Jonathan are thinking about how people will react in the best way to explain it to them. So right. I, I think we should work hard at, at trying to do that. Right. Agreed. Good. Anything else? Just no, another big thank you. Yeah, John, thanks, man. I, I can. I mean, Welcome. from just a personal and professional perspective, I appreciate the way that you've led through this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have a motion to uh, adjourn? So moved. So moved. <laughs> okay. Second. Uh, this is Satori. Yes. Scott. Yes. Jonathan. Yeah. Yes. Ken. Yes. And John Rappa. Yes. Meeting is adjourned at eight twenty-three. Night, Thank guys. Night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.